What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, bloggingtheboys.com. We hope all is well with you. We hope you're safe, happy, healthy. We hope you're practicing social distancing, washing your hands, not touching your face. This is uh, These are troubling times for our world, and we're trying to make it through all together. So once again, we hope all is well with you. It was a busy first week of free agency for the Dallas Cowboys. Obviously, they were pretty focused on their own. The Cowboys did what they could. They re-signed Amari Cooper. They gave Blake Jarwin an extension. They brought back players like Justin Martin. March, like Joe Thomas, like LP Ladu said, the long snapper who's been doing it for as long as anybody can remember. It wasn't, as it usually hasn't been, a week where the Cowboys went out and got a lot of external players. We haven't seen that from the Cowboys. They love their compensatory picks, the Cowboys do, so they don't want to give up uh, any sort of ride, forfeit any opportunity to get any kind of compensatory picks. So we typically see the Cowboys kind of slow play free agency when it comes to bringing people in. You ever, you know, go shopping on Black Friday at about, you know, 5 p.m. after everything's gone and there's only a couple of things left. Sometimes you can find some good stuff there. That's how the Cowboys roll. They're bargain shoppers. And the Cowboys really have done a pretty solid job of bringing in some external free agents. First off, first player got the ball rolling, Gerald McCoy. That's right, defensive tackle of Oklahoma Sooner fame. By the way, one of the best defensive tackles in Oklahoma Sooner history. Tony Casillas and I do a podcast on the Blog on the Boys podcast feed. You can subscribe wherever you get podcasts. It's called the 750. You can also listen to the Ocho, my show. You can listen to Bruce and the Boys talking the draft. we got a lot of options for you. But Gerald McCoy comes into the Cowboys, who lost Malik Collins to the Las Vegas Raiders in free agency. And Gerald McCoy, probably an improvement, right? Probably a better player than Malik Collins. And he comes in. He's a guy who has a lot of experience, obviously been doing it for a long time. You know that Gerald McCoy, it's been a long time since he, uh, you know, has not performed you know, pretty admirably. Since 2012, Gerald McCoy has never had a season where he played less than 13 games or had less than five sacks in a season. That is some production that I will take out of my defensive tackle. Thank you very much. But the Cowboys were not done. No, no, no. They might not have gone crazy, but the Cowboys went and they shopped in responsible ways. We know that Byron Jones is now the highest paid defensive back in the NFL in the NFL's history, now plays for the Miami Dolphins. Well, the Cowboys needed help at cornerback and nobody, let me be clear nobody is saying that this is the answer to Byron Jones leaving however the Cowboys did go out and get a cornerback in free agency and a lot of people had connected Chris Harris Jr. to the Cowboys Desmond Trufant to the Cowboys guess who they signed somebody who you've probably never heard of and that's no disrespect intended but Maurice Kennedy that's right formerly of the New York Jets and Baltimore Ravens Maurice is an interesting prospect uh, Maurice is somebody, again, that not a lot of people are supremely aware of, but kind of grades out in an interesting way. We know that Mike McCarthy spent the last year of his life learning, studying, understanding different trends, understanding different things that the NFL has sort of adopted in recent memory. Mike McCarthy used the buzzword analytics. That's right. Mike McCarthy is a fan of analytics. He spent a day at Pro Football Focus. He's all about it. He's probably on football Twitter. We don't even know it. However, uh, in the spirit of all this, Mike McCarthy was not going to get kept off the scoreboard. No, no, no. Mike McCarthy got maybe what might be his guy in Maurice Kennedy. Why could Maurice Kennedy be Mike McCarthy's guy? I'll tell you why. If you look at Pro Football Focus's grades for the 2019 season, they have a lot of ways that they organize and characterize them, but if you look at their overall defensive grades for cornerbacks last season, Maurice Kennedy, number 20. That's right, number 20. The only Cowboys cornerback who ranked ahead of him was Byron Jones, but Maurice, uh, in an interesting sort of season, Kind of under the radar, kind of somebody with some some things that people like, and it seems like Mike McCarthy might be one of those people. Now, that's only half of what the Cowboys have done so far in terms of external free agents to date. Their third move stayed in the secondary. That's right, Mike McCarthy. Speaking of him, he went out and got an old friend back in January when Mike McCarthy had first been hired to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. We speculated. We said, you know, all these guys, all these new coaches, they all have players they've worked with in the past. Who could make sense for the Cowboys? i tell you one name who did make sense for the Dallas Cowboys. Safety. Ha, ha, Clinton Dix. That's right. It was back in 2014 that a lot of people thought that the Cowboys would ultimately draft Ha, ha with their first round pick. They drafted some dude named Zach Martin. I think it worked out. No big deal. But Ha, ha finally found his way to the Cowboys. And uh, I think that this one's worth being excited about. Now, I don't believe, and I don't think that you should believe, that Clinton Dix necessarily means the Cowboys won't take a safety with their first round draft pick at 17 overall if they feel so inclined to do so. Xavier McKinney, Grant Delpit, Antoine Winfield Jr., they're all still options if that's the direction the Cowboys 
want to go in. However, Haha ha gives them a stable presence, a veteran, somebody who knows what he's doing, somebody who certainly knows Mike McCarthy, and somebody who actually has defended Mike McCarthy before. That's right, you might remember last year, there was a big story that came out in Bleach Report detailing all of the dysfunction and bad chemistry between Mike McCarthy and quarterback Aaron Rodgers of the Packers. Haha ha came to Mike McCarthy's defense, so you know that Haha ha respects his brand new head coach. Although not really brand new, because again, kind of, you know, what did Barney Stinson used to say? What new is better than old, something like that? Anyway, the Cowboys also have another new defensive tackle. That's right. You know, when the Cowboys watched film in 2019, maybe they just loved the Carolina Panthers because they went and got Joe McCoy, who spent 2019 with the Panthers, and they went out and got Don Terry Poe. That's right, the Cowboys had been linked to a few different defensive tackles, but Don Terry ultimately ended up being the guy the Cowboys chose to pair with Gerald McCoy. That's right, the uh, the Dallas Panthers, uh, which is kind of cool if you think about it, because Friday Night Lights took place in the state of Texas, so now there are some prominent Panthers uh, in the Republic. Anyway, uh, Don Terry Poe is still not even 30 years old, so there's a lot to like about that. Two-time Pro Bowler has uh, had some interesting days in the NFL, and Don Terry Poe, look, I know he plays defensive tackle, and that's his job with the Dallas Cowboys, but don't rule out Don Terry Poe as a secret offensive weapon. That's right, when Don Terry Poe was a member of the Kansas City Chiefs, now Super Bowl winning head coach, Andy Reid used him in a variety of ways. We've seen Don Terry Poe rush for a touchdown. We've seen Don Terry Poe catch a screen pass for a touchdown. We even saw Don Terry Poe on Christmas night in 2016 throw a touchdown pass a la Tim Tebow. The next day, the Cowboys would go on to beat the Detroit Lions if you want to remember something good. But Don Terry Poe certainly presents some interesting options for the Dallas Cowboys. So the Cowboys now have four external free agents and, uh, you know, some time to realize and kind of assess uh, what they've got and look over it all and hopefully be pleased with it because the next talent acquisition period is the NFL draft and we know according to reports that it might not necessarily take place in Vegas who knows what it's going to ultimately be obviously the NFL is practicing social distancing as best as it can and again we hope that you are as well um, but the Cowboys go into the NFL draft with protective measures at the positions that they were most shallow defensive tackle and safety the secondary as a whole were the positions where the Cowboys needed a lot of help and they have some help but they certainly need some more as the Cowboys try to add some more we'll have you cover along the way of course at blogandtheboys.com on the aforementioned blog and the boys podcast feed and right here on the official blog and the boys youtube channel make sure you subscribe so you never miss one of our fantastic videos whether it's recaps film breakdowns whatever the case may be there's a lot going on and we want you to be part of it all with us so do me a favor all right have the absolute best day ever you know why because you deserve it